Well, they clearly have a log in their own eye. That is obviously a log. Like that issue, that statement, that church practice, it is clearly not right. Hey, I'm Michael Hoff with Digital Theologian, and today's video is a quick word about discernment ministries. This is something that's been popular online for a long time. Uh, before the internet and before blogs, it was the kind of thing that would happen in a back room or a basement where somebody would gather together a small group of people and then basically diss on all of their least favorite biblical teachers or the preachers in the area. And now that the internet has exploded and we can watch preachers and teachers from all over the world, now that has been amplified significantly. And uh, you know, as I see that, I see so many people that are getting famous or becoming popular, gaining thousands and hundreds of thousands of followers simply because they're becoming known for what they're against. They're against this certain group of people or these certain teachers, and they do a series of videos against them, and that makes them exceptionally popular. And like, look, I get it. Like, We need, as followers of Jesus, to be pursuing the truth. We need to be the kind of people who can rightly discern what is truth, that we properly handle the Word of God. And it's appropriate at times for us to point out things that are clearly in error. I think that as we talk about discernment ministries, it's so essential that we have their repentance at heart and know that no matter what, we are not the arbiters of all truth. There are areas where no matter how much time we have spent studying, no matter how hard we have attempted to hear the Holy Spirit and put into practice what we have learned, we will fall short. We won't be perfect theologians. We won't be perfect Christians. And so we need to extend grace to others. I think Jesus might have said something about that, like in Matthew 7, something about... Before you go to get the sawdust out of your brother's eye, get the log out of your own. Well, they clearly have a log in their own eye. That is obviously a log. Like that issue, that statement, that church practice, it is clearly not right. And no matter what, I think it's essential that we get our own issues dealt with first before going after anyone else. So as we watch discernment ministries, I just think we need to take a minute and discern the discernment ministries. We just need to pause and ask a question about what is the heart that motivates them? What is driving them? Is this the kind of thing that Jesus himself would have endorsed? I also think that we have to be careful that we aren't allowing our own pet theology and our own cultural expressions or expressions of Christianity to shape entirely how we understand and view somebody else. Because it can be very easy for us to criticize and condemn those who are not like us. And I think we need to take a moment and pause because I don't want us to relive some of the worst eras in the history of the church simply because we get angry about what other people are teaching. I mentioned that it's important for Christians to pursue truth. Like it, It's important for us to understand the Bible and to rightly proclaim exactly what we're understanding and seeing there. We need to be clear on the messages of Scripture, and what we see on the page needs to be what we are faithfully communicating. And I understand that at times what you're hearing on a Sunday morning can deviate from what's going on in Scripture, and I, my heart is to see those two things brought in line. That's why the vast majority of time on this channel has been spent unpacking specific passages of scripture, like the entire gospel of John, the first few chapters of Acts, or the first few chapters of Matthew. Right? My heart is to be able to walk through individual passages, to examine some of the underlying historical and cultural values that are there that help bring light to our understanding of what is actually on the page, and where sometimes a simple face value reading would lead us into error or miss application pretty easily, that we can get at a correct understanding of what is actually in the Bible, what the heart of God is, and how we can live out the pattern of Jesus to the people around us. And because of that, I wanted to be very careful that we don't get pigeonholed into simply criticizing one another and chucking stones at other Christians. It is vital that we pursue truth, and 2 Timothy 2.15 says this, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by Him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word 
of truth. That is essential. We need to be people who can rightly explain the word of truth to those around us. How else can we give an account of the hope that we have because Jesus has been raised from the dead and that we have been adopted by God as his children, that the Holy Spirit fills us, gives us life, that we have the grace of God to live by faith, and man, that we can move forward as people empowered by the Holy Spirit, bringing about the good news of the kingdom of God, that we can work with God and carry out his desires, his dreams for the world around us. So while we need to be aware of the truth and we need to pursue it and we need to go after it, it is so much easier to criticize other people than to clearly communicate what you stand for. And I think that for so long, American Christianity has been focused on criticizing what we are against. And it is high time for us to embrace the truths of the gospel and stand for the things that we really value value, to stand for love, to stand for peace, to stand for the oppressed, to be those who stand up as followers of Jesus and live the gospel, that we would declare that salvation is only found in the name of Jesus, that it is only possible for us to be forgiven and redeemed as we come to faith in Jesus Christ. And then we need to go ahead and provide sound, logical reasons that you can trust that the Bible is true, that the resurrection happened, that God has worked miracles throughout history and that he's continuing to work in this present age, right? So if we can do that and we can be about those things, then we don't have to get caught up in all of the culture wars. And while it's important for us to understand where we view issues, especially in a democracy, man, I don't want us to be known for what we're against, but to truly be the people of God and stand for something. Am I on my soapbox? I might be. And now I know for those of you that are involved with discernment ministries or you love watching content from these YouTube channels, right? You might say, well, Paul called out people that he disagreed with. And you are absolutely right. Paul pulled no punches. So in the same paragraph where Paul names names and tells Timothy not to be involved with two specific individuals, he then goes on to say this, avoid profane chatter for it will lead people into more and more impiety and their talk will spread like gangrene. Have nothing to do with stupid and senseless controversies. You know that they breed quarrels and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kindly to everyone an apt teacher, patient, correcting opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant that they will repent and come to know the truth, and that they may escape the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. As somebody who is correcting others, it needs to be in the kind of context where your interaction with them could lead to repentance. So we don't want to just let everything go, but we also need to be in close enough proximity to individuals that we can have conversations with them that can have a redeeming element. And so we aren't supposed to be quarrelsome. We are to be patient and kindly. And I think that as I I watch the tone of a lot of discernment ministries, I'm concerned because I don't see that same kindness and that invitation to repentance. I get it. There are people on the left and on the right, theologically and politically, that are going to be standing up on their soapboxes making statements that I disagree with. But I have to remember that ultimately, I am not the arbiter of truth. I know that when I arrive in heaven, Jesus is not going to say, hey, Michael, way to go, buddy. You had the best theology in the entire world. You are amazing. That's not how it's going to go. I'm going to come in and I am going to be absolutely humbled by encountering the presence of God, by seeing Jesus face to face. Everything that I have, I'm going to recognize is trash and I'm going to lay the best efforts that I have given at his feet. But I know that it's only because of Jesus that I even have a place in the throne room, that I can come boldly before God and his throne of grace because of the work of Jesus, my own righteousness is filthy rags. And I get that. So if you're in a discernment ministry, please hear this with the heart that's behind it. I consider you a brother or sister in Christ. My heart is that you would be gracious to others and that as you interact with them, if there isn't an opportunity for repentance or enough interaction to help lead people back to Christ, then I wonder 
if we're actually doing what scripture is calling us to. Feel free to disagree with me down in the comments because I know folks always do. But I want to say, may God bless you. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Welcome to the internet age where we can turn off the heaters that are too loud for our videos right from our phones. Ooh, yes, it will be 68. Well, how about we turn it off? We'll set it down to 55. Why? Because it doesn't matter because I'm going to turn it back on here in just a minute.